Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be starting another build series with a knife based on and inspired by Master Smith Kyle Royer's buoy takedown course. I recently purchased this course and it's proven to be some of the best money I've ever spent in knife making. It's comprised of hours and hours of detailed footage where Kyle explains each step of the process for constructing his takedown buoy along with access to a great group of makers and a private Facebook group. To put this in context, the multi-part build of this knife is only going to consist of a total of about 45 minutes of footage, and that's on a knife that took me around two months of weekends to make. So these builds, to some degree, are pretty condensed. If you want every step with the nitty gritty details and essentially online support if you have questions, then you need to save your bones and buy the Royer Takedown course. While we're on the subject, if you do buy the course, I'd advise trying to build at least one knife by the book with his methods, even if you have different techniques that you like better. I found myself wanting to go a different route a few times during this build and had to reel myself in to stay in the path. The main motivation for doing this is to push myself out of my comfort zone and to also use this experience as a catalyst to try different techniques. Some of these methods are a personal preference and others just work flat out better than others. I see myself taking a large portion of Kyle's methods going forward after this buoy but none of them will be absolute and I'll continue to experiment. Hands down, the best things I learned from Mr. Royer's videos was his application of patience and his attention to detail. For this, I'm grateful to him for providing such a great product for those of us looking to learn the ropes. As y'all just saw, I got this knife forged out close to shape and then cleaned up on the 2x72 and surface grinding attachment. While my forging is a work in progress, I think I'm getting the hang of it. I've been focusing on keeping my hammer blows off the spine and ricasso as well as leaving a good deal of meat in the ricasso to work with down the road. It seems to be working pretty good. Here we're cleaning up the blade to line up with my sketch. At this point I'd say these dimensions on the ricasso are around 90% of where they will be at the end. Before heat treating the knife I'm going to be cleaning up my bevels and I'll grind them to around 70% of completion. To do this I'm using a 36 grit belt. I really haven't used this low of a grit belt that much so I'm still getting used to them. So far, I really like the lower heat and faster removal you get with a 36 grit belt. I'm using the work rest method to grind this blade with both a gloved hand and a Teflon push stick. I like using the push stick, however, in the beginning, it can be a little tough with the forging pits and the bevels, which is why I started with the gloved hand. I've used this grinding method for the past few knives I've made, and I've really been getting accustomed to it. The ability to apply a significant amount of pressure with the push stick is a major win, and that pressure can be applied directionally, which helps me keep things fairly straight. As many of y'all know, I recently built a disc grinder, so I decided to try it out for fun with some 120 grit paper. I would not normally go to the disc at this point, but I just wanted to play around with it when I knew I really couldn't mess anything up. I truly think disc grinders are underappreciated, and I'm super stoked to have one in my shop. At the end of the forging process for this 1084 blade, I annealed it in vermiculite. The first thing I'm doing here with the oven is getting the knife up to a good normalizing temperature of around 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, then letting it cool to room temperature. I then heated the blade up to 1525 degrees and quenched it in Parks 50 for around 7 seconds before clamping it in my straightening jig. This jig hasn't failed me yet and does a darn good job of keeping everything fairly straight, even after pre-heat treat grinding. I file tested the blade to verify I got it hard, clamped it in between some pieces of angle iron, and then tempered it in my PID control toaster oven for two two hour cycles at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. To date, I've had pretty darn good performance results with 1084 knives heat treated to these specifications. I lightly touched up the bevels, then headed over to the disc grinder to make sure my ricasso is flat and parallel. This is an operation that the disc grinder really shines at. While I was there, I also trued up the edge profile and squared up my spine with some 320 grit Rhino wet sandpaper on the disc. To give you all an idea of how awesome this disc grinder is, I decided to whip out the micrometer to verify my ricasso is parallel. I measured a variance of 4 ten thousandths of an inch from the top to the bottom of the ricasso, which is good enough for me. If this measurement was off, I would just head back to the disc to grind and check until they're close. It helps that I started off with a ricasso that had been surface ground pre-heat treatment with my surface grinding attachment on the 2x72, but with the disc you could have gotten here without the SGA. Now that the ricasso is flat and parallel, I moved on to the bevels. I marked out a target edge thickness of around 20 thousandths of an inch 
then started working to this target with a 36 grit belt and the push stick method. Like I said earlier, I'm really getting the hang of this method, and I think the bevels turned out pretty nice on this blade. One thing that I'll mention is that I think I went a little too high on the bevels with the 36 grit belt. I ended up having some issues later on the build trying to maintain my curve at the top of the plunge line and not grind it off the spine. At this point, I applied some tape to the spine and knife to protect it and convex the edge to an apple seed geometry and down to 10 thousandths of an inch at the edge thickness. I'm using an 80 grit belt to accomplish this and only convexed around one half of an inch up the bevel. I sharpened the knife at a 21 degree angle on my wind water cooled sharpening wheel and then trued up the edge with my easy lap diamond stone. To remove the burr, I used a one inch leather belt from Amazon. I'm for sure not the best sharpener in the world, but I can say that beyond a shadow of a doubt, this knife is super sharp. Definitely one of the best edges I've ever been able to produce on a blade to date. In true Royer fashion, I performed a little performance test by cutting a two by four and a half. The edge held up perfectly and was able to easily shave hair after the test. At this point, I had to remove that wonderfully sharp edge and continue with the build. Here I have an opportunity to use my disc grinder for real and flatten my bevels. With a distal taper on the blade, the zero degree disc seems to work just fine for the seven inch buoy. I got both of my bevels flat and worked up to a 120 grit finish on the disc. The next step is going to be getting my plunge lines dialed in with a waterfall platen. I use a file guide to scribe a target line on both sides of the blade, and then I get started with a 120 grit J-Flex belt on the waterfall platen. I'm still experimenting with belts to see which one gives me the best results on this platen. These green ceramic Hermes J-Flex belts really didn't do so hot, so I don't think I'll be using them in the future for this operation. One thing I want to note with my specific platen is that I have a 1 16th of an inch radius on the edge. You can go smaller or larger depending on what look you're shooting for. Once I have the plunges dialed in, I'll bring it up to a 320 grit finish on the disc grinder, inspect the symmetry, and then get to shaping my choil. I've been putting a radius in my choils on the past builds, but I really like Royer's sweeping choil design here. With the bulk of the grinding done, it's time to get the bevels hand sanded up to a 600 grit finish. I start off with some 320 grit Rhino wet sandpaper and then move to 600 right after. For this hand sanding, I'm using a hard backer in order to maintain my bevel's flatness and I slightly tip up my paper in order to cover the convex portion of the bevel. I'm going to be threading my tang later in the build and also cutting in my ricasso in the mill, so I decided to blue back my tang and ricasso. This proved to be a mistake since softening my ricasso caused some shoulder deformation during the guard fitting process with a stainless steel guard, but we'll leave those details to the next video. I took this opportunity to bring up the underside of the ricasso, the choil, and the spine to a 600 grit finish to match the bevels. You want to have the bulk of your sanding done with the ricasso before guard fitting so as to maintain your fit. At this point, I'll be grinding in my clip. I start off with a 54 degree angle, which proved to be a little too shallow for a nice big clip. After messing around my rad arm attachment from Northridge, I was able to get my table set to a 59 degree angle. I think I can make some modifications to the tooling arm to get an even higher angle on the next build. However, I decided to follow some advice given to me by Journeyman Smith, Matt Roberts, and freehand the rest of the bevels on an 8 inch contact wheel. I gotta say I was pretty darn nervous with this, but it all worked out pretty well. After getting off the grinder, I cleaned up this clip to a 600 grit finish on the hand sanding bench. I made sure I dialed in the symmetry on the clip's plunges with the hand sanding. During this process, I used a hard backing to my sandpaper in an effort not to wash out these lines on the clip. So at this point we have a blade that's mostly done with a hand sanded finish up to a 600 grit. The next step is to cut my shoulders into the ricasso. I'll be using the 3990 mini mill from littlemachineshop.com for this operation and we'll be employing a slightly different technique than Mr. Royer. As you can see in many of Kyle Royer's videos on YouTube, he actually lightly contacts his file guide with the carbide end mill. I decided to try milling in the shoulder and back cutting my ricasso without contacting the file guide and relying on the precision of my mill alone for this operation. Since we'll be fitting the guard over the ricasso, I feel like I can get away with this. I'm using a 3 16 of an inch end mill for this task, since I found that the eighth inch end mills seem to have a good deal of flex, and the quarter inch end mills are just too big for the shoulder. All in all, this method worked out okay, but I did make a mistake that I'll go into detail about in a moment. I must say that I think the next knife that I do, I won't be back cutting the ricasso, and I'll rely solely on a press fit on the sides of the ricasso. There are lots of ways to skin this cat, and I think I'll be trying all of them by the time I'm done experimenting. 
All right, well, I made a mistake. I milled in my shoulders a little too far. I wasn't thinking on the mill, and it was kind of hard to see, so I ended up going too deep into my ricasso on both sides, which resulted in a very skinny tang once I ground the tang uh, flush with these shoulders, which you have to do. So this is a much thinner tang than I was shooting for. I think I'll still be okay from a strength perspective. Uh, it still lines up pretty good here. It's about 490 thousandths tall and uh, 190 thousandths thick. So like I said, it's probably smaller. It's way smaller than I wanted it to be. You only really need to come down maybe an eighth of an inch flat on the top and the bottom. And uh, this may be this may be like a 3 16 or maybe a little more flat on the top and the bottom. So not terribly happy about that, but I think I'm still good to go here. For those reasons I just stated, I think I'm going to be performance testing this knife at the very end of the series when everything is finished and fitted up, just to verify it will hold up to some of these. I'm pretty confident it will, however, I want to find out for sure. I'm not exactly sure how many videos will be in this series, however, I'm thinking it will land around three or four videos, just like my recent June Hunter series. As y'all can see by watching this first part, this style of knife takes a significant amount of time to make. Or at least it does for me right now, maybe I'll get faster in the future. This is one of the first times that I'm posting a part one of a video series without being finished with the knife, so make sure to wish me luck with the rest of the build. Also let me know in the comment section if y'all are enjoying the video series format, and also as usual I'm open to any feedback on my builds. Know that I make sure to put eyes on every comment left on one of my videos, in an effort to help out new makers and to learn from y'all's suggestions as well. In the next video, we'll be fitting up the guard and probably getting started on the handle. If y'all want to be notified when the next video comes out, hit the subscribe button down below along with the bell icon. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.